it's great to have you, all of you together. You know, in 1999, the squad won the first uh, women's championship for Duke Athletics, as well as, of course, women's golf uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And um, it's a, a great occasion and, and kind of what it started for this program going forward and now has won seven national championships. But, um, you know, from what I've read, um, you know, after the team finished fourth in 1998, it kind of lit a fire underneath you guys. And uh, mm -hmm. you were kind of, um, I think, preseason number one going into the season. What did that loss in 1998 do to this team to get it motivated to really to win it in 99? Where, where are we in 98 again? <laughs> Wisconsin. 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 Oh, yeah. Uh, I think we've always I think what I remember is that we always um, we always knew we we were good we always I guess knew we had it in us and I think our our continued what I remember is that we continue just to focus on having fun but still just being grinding it out and focusing on just winning every time and I think something just clicked where we kept doing what we were doing but it just all came together uh, Beth and Candy came on and I think that we just kind of all play to our strengths. And I think that, um, you know, Dan was able to kind of coach us where we were, you know, maybe to step it up a little bit. But I just remember that we kept focusing on just enjoying the process, but not kind of sticking with what we were doing and just know, having faith that it would happen. I think coach was really good. I think we all were really strong individually coming in. Um, but he was really good at just letting us play to our strengths and, um, do what we, you know, thought was right for our game to be ready for every event. But just, and, but at the same time, making sure that we were connected as a team. Um, I thought he balanced yeah. that really well because it's really hard to get individual players that are really focused on themselves and then all of a sudden you play for a team. And, uh, but I think we, we did that really well. Yeah, and I think to add to that, I remember taking my recruiting trip I think it was the second or third one out of the five I was allowed and <clears throat> excuse me, leaving Duke, I just knew there was something special there between coach and the team already intact um, and, uh, and joining that atmosphere and that team. Uh, and of course, loving the school, it just, uh, it felt, it felt right. I knew leaving there, I knew that that, that was where I was going to go. And I knew that um, we were probably going to do some special things there. What about the, the summer of 99, 98 was uh, pretty successful with Jenny at the U.S. Open, yeah. uh, the North and South Amateur Championship with, um, uh, with both Beth and Jenny advancing to the finals there and Beth winning and then uh, Jenny and the Curtis Cup. Did that successful summer have that confidence help to help kind of boost you guys to start out the season the way you did? I, th I mean, I thought we all came into the summer. Jenny, you can speak to it the most. You were the most impacted by that summer. But I think we all were really ex – I mean, Beth and I, I think we can speak. We were just really excited to come on to a team that had had such a great summer, but um, also that, you know, we knew it was the right fit for us. Yeah, and I – gosh, I have so many memories of that summer. Um, and, I mean, for me, it was just a – being in the zone. I don't think I've ever been in the zone like that um, for the entire probably 98 season. 99 was a little shaky because uh, looking back, I had a lot of, uh, maybe you can call it trauma <laughs> from the US Open. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, everything happens for a reason and it was really special to get so close um, and to be able to compete against the, the the big wigs out there. Uh, looking back, it's, it was sort of meant to be. Uh, it allowed me to, I guess, prove myself and, you know, show that I could uh, compete against all those people, but then also have the opportunity to kind of step away. And um, I don't think if that, did, if that had not happened, um, it wouldn't have uh, pushed me to kind of look within myself to see you know, what, what was meaningful to me in my life and what I wanted to do going forth. I think my biggest and best memories are my Duke years. I mean, I just loved every one of you guys and it was such an amazing experience, like just every single bit of it. 
um, you know, being away from golf for so long now, um, you know, I, I'm getting back to those peaceful times of being on the golf course and just, uh, I always think of you guys and, and the special memories we have. Well, Dan, what, what about you? Did you, when you got the team together in August and had the first couple meetings and practices, did you kind of have a sense this team could be something special? <laughs> well, we, we got Beth Bauer and Candy Hanneman. Um, and that was, that was a great recruiting class. I think they were, uh, they combined to have like a thousand all American AJGA all Americans. I don't know. You guys are, I think, I think what Beth won 16 tournaments and Candy won a bunch and I don't know how many all Americans, but they were the two, in my opinion, they were the top two players to go after. And we, we were fortunate to get both of them. So yeah, that made a huge difference. Um, and then we played it. We played our first tournament at Chapel Hill Country Club and had, I think, seven people in the top 10. So that gave us a pretty good idea that we were capable of a lot and, uh, you know, to start the season that way. And then I think we won every tournament in the fall. So by the end of the fall, uh, we were thinking real big. <clears throat> well, as, as seniors, like Jenny and Filippo, did, did you all kind of do anything special to bring the team together or to help, you know, kind of – uh, bringing in two very highly touted freshmen to mesh along with everybody else. Did y'all have to do much of that as lead, senior leaders? I think um, we took a yogurt pop. That might have been it. I know. <laughs> it was a, always dessert was kind of one of our things. But I think I think Jenny and I, I think going back to her open just for a second, I think for us how it impacted, like for me who had played with Jenny all four years, um, it was pretty impactful. And I don't think she really knew it at the time, but she could have made any number of choices after that summer and she would have made the right choice no matter what choice she made. And I think for us being on the team that she came back to us when she didn't have to, I think that was pretty impactful and a great way to kick it off for us as a team. Like she wanted to be there. She didn't have to come back. She could have turned pro. She could have done so many things and she, her opportunities were endless in front of her. And I think she chose Duke and she chose us to continue. And I think that was kind of a great kickoff for us and, and, a way something I remember being pretty impactful but to go back to your question I think Jenny and I and you know Caitlin had all obviously been there when Beth and Candy came in too I think we focused a lot on the stuff off the golf course and joy off the golf course we focused a lot on making sure we had fun at dinner picking good food I mean I know it sounds crazy but I think it was a way for us to connect outside of golf and I think we just kept going with that I don't know Jenny, you can answer, but I think we just kind of kept doing what we were doing and had fun. And, you know, we were all of ourselves and we let them bring their personalities to it. And I think that's what made it a fun team and a fun year. Mm -hmm. And I always, I always found that um, uh, Dan allowed us to keep the balance on the team and we were all pretty self-driven. I mean, if you yeah. told us we didn't have to be there that weekend, we all were going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, so it kind of allowed us to balance our studies and our golf and, you know, keep yeah. us getting burnt out. Yeah, and be ourselves. He was awesome at just letting us, you know, he found a way to let each of, like Candy mentioned earlier, we each knew what we needed and he was really good at supporting that and supporting what we needed. And hey, if I wanted to take classes two days a week and come out a different time than the team, it was okay because that's what worked for me. And I think he was good at kind of seeing, seeing that. I think for, you know, looking back, I don't know, Beth and Kaylin, maybe you guys can speak uh, about that, but for us, um, maybe uh, Jenny and Philippe, I didn't think that they were being kind of leaders or role models, um, but I think one of the things that they were incredible leaders at was really showing us that college golf and the experience was a lot more than just golf um, and just really understanding all that Duke brought to us in terms of school or all the unique individuals that we would meet along the way and to really cherish that. So, and I think we did that. And if it wasn't for their leadership um, of showing us kind of how to do that and really take advantage of, of, of the whole package instead of just focusing on golf, um, I don't know if number one, we would have been as successful or number two, we would have enjoyed our time at Duke as much as we did because I think their leadership really kind of, you know, led the path to the team. And I hope that that continues at Duke. And I think, you know, Kaylin did that at her senior year. I tried to do that my senior year to really push the girls to do a lot more than just golf and just look at the school and everything that it had to offer. Uh -huh. I think yeah. that's really well said, Candy. I mean, I think, I think Jenny and, and Philippa were great leaders and, and kind of to what Philippa said as well is, is Jenny just coming back and her attitude about 
coming back when she did, you know, in general, kind of have some other choices. And, and I know she had a lot of pressure in terms of, of turning professional, but it was all about Duke and it was all about school. And Jenny was a huge leader um, in terms it of that. Never <laughs> that. It was never a doubt. It was never a doubt. Right, and I think that just speaks for itself. And it was just, we kind of rallied around you as, as the player that you were and, you know, the, the leader that you were off the golf course as well. And, and you and Philippa establishing that, that culture of just fun and, um, you know, just there's, there's perspective and things outside of golf, as Coach Brooks does, you know, and, and that's important. And, and that was, I think, a big part of our success as, you know, you get into all of our, you know, type A. I was very type A. There's a lot of different, you know, we all come from different cultures and backgrounds, but to just, you know, go in there and have that, that, that other outlet, you know, to get back from golf. We really did have a really good family atmosphere and, and um, I couldn't imagine of, of being somewhere else and, and having success somewhere else other than, than what you guys established. And like Candy said, that was a culture we tried to, to set a precedent for as after you guys left. And, and I think that was what we remember mostly rather than all the I mean, I don't remember winning four tournaments in the fall. Um, I know. I remember the memories. That's what's crazy. You know? <laughs> and I'll add to that. Um, you know, I know you guys know kind of the struggles I went through leaving uh, professional life and stuff like that. And I think, I think looking back on it now that I'm nearly 40, that um, college is such a special place just because you have that balance and you have those friendships and when you lose that sometimes you lose the balance and the passion and the love and and it kind of becomes overwhelming and I know that that's what happened with me um whereas I mean looking back at, at the only the two years I was at Duke was like oh my gosh it was one of the most special times ever other than having my daughter um just because it, it, it's everything that you grew up doing. You had your schooling, you had your fun times, you had golf, uh, and you were able to balance it all. You know, we were always able to balance it all so well. And then we had to each other to push each other to do that, which was um, something I'll never forget. What did, you know, after the tournament was over and you were crowned champions, I mean, what was that like? I, I, I mean, with having the round canceled and going back to the scores before and, and being in the clubhouse, how was that uh, when you finally realized, hey, we're, we're national champions? I mean, I it was it, I, awesome on, on our side, but I think, you know, I think we got a little bit of a little bit of a hard time because, you know, they didn't, some people didn't think it was fair, but I, you know, I think in my heart to today, you know, we led from day one to day three or day four or whatever. What did we play three days? We ended up playing three days. Mm -hmm. uh, and the so, fourth day of four is canceled. Yeah. But we were so, leading. Like when we yeah. went back, we were leading, right? I mean, we were, mm -hmm. yeah, I think math, was we, we were going to win strong, if we stopped but... at that moment and they had counted the fourth round. So I think we all felt good about it, but I think it was just, it was a weird feeling, but I think at the end it was still awesome. We still won. That's all that anybody really remembers. What about you, for you, Dan? I mean, that was your first national championship as well. And, You've won seven now. What was that moment like for you as a coach? Uh, it was great. I didn't have too much trouble with the uh, with the hail out or whatever you want to call it, um, because we had we had led, and you know it wasn't a freaky deal. We'd led through the whole tournament, and we were, we were leading when the thing ended. Um, so. You know, you wouldn't want, you wouldn't wish it to end that way, but I didn't have any real problems with it. it it's just the way it is. And you want to, you know, take that lesson. You want to make sure you're getting the lead as early as you can and keep it because you never know when things are going to happen. Tournaments, that tournaments end that way. It happens. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, but that was a, it was a fantastic group. We had a lot of talent on the team, very deep, um, great people. And, you know, bouncing off of what people said a minute ago. Um, when you have a team of, call them self-starters or, you know, people that got them, they, you know, they all got to Duke. I mean, they're the kind of personalities that would get to Duke. The last thing you want to do is overcoach a group like that. Um, 
that wouldn't be in my nature anyway, but then, you know, you just let character attract character. You bring in people that are, have a lot of passion inside and then you just get out of their way. Um, and, you know, that was a, it was like a, a model team as far as that, you know, as far as that type of a team, it, they were a model team. It's fantastic. How, how proud are you, you as far as a team winning the first national title and really kind of put Duke off on the map? I mean, they were very successful prior to this championship too, but never won that title. And then you look at what we the program has done today. It won seven national titles coming off one this past season to help to know you were part of that to help get it to where it is now. Well, it feels great. Um, <clears throat> you know, we – I would say that was the, even though we, we had had a very successful year the year before, um, that this 98, 98, 99 team was the first team we had where you would, you would point at them and say, hey, they've got a really good chance of winning the national championship. So that, that was cool. And that the first year that I felt from my perspective that we actually were, you know, we were ranked one. Um, but we, it wasn't a fluky kind of a thing. I mean, we were a really, really solid team and that, so this team tripped the whole thing and not to mention, I think the character that we had on the team, people knew about that. I can remember one incident at that tournament where one of the other coaches came up to us and came up to me and just talked to me about how classy the team was and, you know, that, that meant a lot. I think we were a team that would attract future recruits. Uh, you know, I, again, character attracts character. And I think we, it was a, it was important for more reasons than we finally got our first championship. It was important that year because of all the winning we had done and the content of character that we had on the team as we won tournament after tournament. It was uh, just a, we got a lot of momentum from that season. You know, it was a lot of pressure in a way because we were number one and we knew we could win it, but you don't know, you know, you don't win it till the end. And actually, you know, doing it, um, it was a lot easier to win number two when it happened um, because of that. And I mean, I have to say, I think it really truly comes from the leadership um, within the team. Um, I don't think we could have done it without that, um, but I think it definitely like led the way to how we would act the next year and kind of the culture that we would wanted to bring to be successful. I think it just, it was important in so many ways other than, you know, not, not just the winning. I think it was important in a lot of ways. I mean, it's really neat to just be part of, of the beginning of, of such a history <clears throat> of winning and, and part of the first national championship for, for women at Duke and, and such a, successful program. And, you know, I think, uh, again, like Candy said, you know, the culture speaks for itself. And I think, you know, we helped create a, a really important culture that's hopefully still, still there. And, and, um, you know, I think we're most proud of our culture that we created and, and the memories that we had. And, and for us to win a national championship on top of that um, speaks to, to Coach Brooks, his leadership, and, and the work ethic that we were all willing to put in, and, and um, it certainly paid off. And it, I think it means a lot more when you have a group of, of people that, that genuinely enjoy each other and love each other and, and um, you know, are, are after the same goals. And it's, um, you know, it was just, it was a very meaningful win um, and a very meaningful championship. I mean, certainly, um, I think there's been other teams where, where it hasn't been as close. I can imagine that it hasn't been as close knit of a group. Um, but uh, that one for me was, was really, really, um, you know, will always stay real close to my heart.